Hey guys, welcome back to the Struggle Village YouTube channel. Out and about today and going by this thrift store. I thought we'd stop in, see if we can find anything interesting. In another a lifetime, this was my profession. Going to thrift stores and retail stores, looking for things that I could buy and resell on Amazon and eBay. And although I still sell a few things on eBay nowadays, nothing like I used to. And this was one of the stores I'd go to somewhat regularly. I had a little circuit I would do that was 10 or more thrift stores, and I'd try and hit them all at one time. Um, this wasn't one of those because it's a different area, but I have been here plenty of times. Let's see if we can find any tools or anything fun in there. It's kind of hit and miss. You never know what you're going to get. It's like a box of chocolates. I do have kind of a mildly amusing, fun story about this store, though. A couple of years ago, back when I was doing this stuff, probably 2017, 16, something like that, uh, I was coming out the front door right here, just like this time, with a bunch of snow on the ground and everything, and I had just found a Tyco slot car thing for G.I. Joe's. So you know those little slot cars where you get the little trigger thing and you pull the trigger and it goes around the track, and it had a bunch of different army vehicles and army men and a whole little, a little town, a little army town or something, I don't know, it had a ton of pieces in it. The box was too big to fit in the cart, you see those little red carts there, so I had it laying across the top of the cart as I came out, there was a car parked right over here and they were trying to get furniture in their car, so I left my cart over here and I helped them load up their furniture and as I was doing doing that, my box, don't know how, wind or something, slid off the top of the cart into a pile of snow. And of course it wasn't taped shut or anything, so all these pieces fell all over the place. And I know 100% that the people saw that fall and saw the mess, and they were just like, oh, thanks, and they got in the car and they left, and they left. So I spent the next 15 minutes right in this area right here, digging through the snow, trying to find all of the pieces. That was fun. No good deed goes unpunished, remember that. Let's go inside, see what we can find. Got these Guidesmen 1750 Lumen Lanterns, but they're $14 each. These two different colors that were half off. They had a sliding scale. One color was 25% off. The next one was 50 and the other one was 75. And I'd always look for just the 50 and 75 stuff. But since I went almost every week, if I saw something, I would just kind of put it in my back pocket and remember to come back next time. Some of this vintage kitchenware appliances can do really good, and I wouldn't even sell them complete. I would break them up. Like, I would sell the lid, and of course everything has a model number on it, so you just say this is the lid for a Presto model, blah, blah, blah. Little heating element thing, sell it all separately. A little basket there. I would take the feet off, maybe take the feet and handles off and sell those as a lot because maybe someone just wants the handles or just wants the feet. No one else is going to have that for sale, so you make them buy the whole thing. Otherwise, you get stuck with too many listings, too many oddball things. Cordless phones sell surprisingly well. You can even sell the little belt clips that come off them and sell those separately. This one doesn't have it on there. But the Pan Panasonic, uh, was it like 6.0? Ones do really cool. Look at that. Do really good. I was looking at this. That's really cool. if it's worth anything but Look at this corner. It's a mess. And no one's in here. I wonder how long it sits like this. I think it's like been weeks just looking like this. Some of the board game stuff is good, but I'd only stick with things that were new. Because most of this is going to be missing pieces. And then what are you going to do with it? No one wants games that are missing pieces. Coolers. Man, you know how many hours of my life I've spent scanning books, different scanning apps, 
Scan them on Amazon, see if they're worth picking up. They used to do Wednesdays where you could fill a cart for, I think it was $10, and you could fill out an entire cart full of books. And I'd get all sorts just scanning all these things. Even if you don't sell stuff online, there's websites or apps that'll pay you for mailing them books. And you can just scan the barcode and they'll say how much they'll give you for that book. And you just scan, 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 scan. All day long. Glad I'm not doing that. It was fun for the time and it was a good way to make money because what you're investing in it is almost zero. But a lot of work, a lot of 50 pound boxes of books going to UPS. Anytime you're looking for DVDs, of course, ones that are new in the package are better than ones that aren't, but you're mostly looking for stuff that wasn't a major Hollywood production, like The Matrix. It was popular in the 90s or whenever it came out, and they made millions and millions of these DVDs. So I would imagine I couldn't even sell it for the price it would cost me to ship it. But you gotta find ones that were like a training video, like sometimes they have like base running tutorials or something, you know, goofy things, educational things. The only major ones that'll be worth something if, if it's out of print, but unless you want to memorize that, it's kind of a pain. You know, memorize like a list of which ones you're looking for, which if they're not being made anymore, boy is that hard to find. I actually got my truck box that I keep in the back of the ZR2 from here. It's a plastic box. I don't know, I know they have it at Menards for like 60 bucks or something, but uh, it was here and it was locked. And they couldn't open it, they didn't have the keys. So they sold it to me for like five bucks and I just broke the lock and don't tell anybody it doesn't lock. <laughs> I mostly wanted it back when I was doing thrift store stuff. So I'd have more covered storage if it was raining or snowing that day. I wouldn't have to worry about stuff getting wet. Oh, a Plano box. I don't know how much they want for that. I don't know, maybe it's free. $15. Get the hell out of here. I've used one of those before. I'm glad I have a real saw now. Hey, a little box of tools. The old school drills. Problem with selling these, whew, $20. I don't even think I can get $20 on eBay for it. The problem with selling these on eBay is they're so big that they don't fit well in any kind of standard packaging and the weight is kind of expensive. Shoot. These drills are always fun. Look at that guy. It's kind of uh, not complete. I don't know if that says 12 bucks. One handle screwdriver. Three dollars for this guy. Better off going to garage maybe sales looking for this stuff. I mean, maybe, okay, but it wasn't really what I thought it was. It was just really emotional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
We'll keep that one. Is that for taking down wallpaper? I think so. Well, if we found one, we gotta pay a little bit more attention. What does this say? At least it's Stanley USA. Could be worse. Actually, pretty good, but mm, nah. it's not going to be worth a lot. But one of my goals for my eBay store is to start putting vintage tools on it, and I have a big old toolbox full of tools that need to be listed. I actually bought them back in 2019 or 2018 or something and just have never gotten around to it, but I'll add it to the pile and maybe before I die I'll do it. I'm always surprised that they sell used underwear. Come on, are we that desperate? Let's throw that shit out. Sometimes you'll find really good thermos stuff and you don't sell the whole thermos, you sell the individual pieces and they usually have the part numbers on the bottom but none of this is the good stuff, this is all trash. Looking for the old ones that have the, ca the cap and the stopper and then usually you can unscrew the bottom and sell the, the liner. This is kind of similar but too new and I've never had luck with Aladdin but they got all the part numbers on the bottom, so you know exactly what they go to. This one doesn't, but the good um, Thermos brand ones do. Dishes. We don't even need to walk down that. Yeah, that's woman stuff. I don't sell woman stuff. They complain too much. <laughs> I can't say that. It's true. Complain too much. Let's go up front. I'm not going to get that, but I went to an auction one time and bought one. Oh, sorry, I'm zoomed in. I can't figure it out. I went to an auction one time and I bought one of those. I got rid of the stick because it was too big, but I can't remember what I got for the little sweeper. Looked just like that guy. Vintage Floor Sweeper. The one says Grand Rapids on it. I think mine did too. Bunch of vintage stuff over there. Man, yeah, how come no one told me I'm driving around looking stupid? Got a strap hanging out the truck and everything. What's going on here? Be respectable, will ya? Well, this is the problem. Things don't fit like they should. Get in there, sucker. All right, there we go. Quick little thrift store trip. At least it wasn't a complete loss. A little snap-on 3.8 nut driver. Add to the collection. All right, guys, that's it. I'm out of here. It's freezing. Thanks for watching. Give the video a like, subscribe for a nice subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.